It's the last day of February, a month where we celebrate so many things, like our world-famous music and good health. In today's show, we continue the celebrations, looking at the impact of reggae. Plus, we have a very special message from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. You won't want to miss it. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. Don't go anywhere. <music> Parents, how do you think your children feel when they are beaten? I feel so sad when my mother beats me. It makes me feel so angry. I feel embarrassed and I feel like you just don't care. It has been proven that coercive parenting is directly linked to the aggression your children are displaying in schools. The National Parenting Support Commission is imploring you, parents, rethink your actions. Stop beating your children. A message from the National Parenting Support Commission in collaboration with Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for improved safety and security in schools. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, February 28. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says progress is being made in the groundwork and sensitization process for the implementation of the National Identification System, NIDS. Mr. Holness was speaking at a press conference following Tuesday's 7th Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, Caribbean Governors Meeting. According to the Prime Minister, the strides will allow for the pilot implementation in the last quarter of 2018. He says the implementation of NIDS, like any other country's national ID system, is important for several reasons. Whether it is increasing the efficiency of the public sector, the speed at which we do business, and giving the citizen an identity, the government is acting in the best interest of the citizen. And that is what we are doing. There's nothing nefarious, nothing to uh, in any way erode the privacy of the citizen, what we are trying to do is to strengthen government so that we can better serve you. Stricter rules will soon be in place for how Justices of the Peace, JPs, operate. This follows the recent passage of the Justices of the Peace Act in the Senate. It was passed with five amendments and will now go back to the House of Representatives for its approval. The bill provides for the codified selection, appointment, discipline and regulation of JPs. For a number of years, there existed only a set of rules which I suspect were crafted by the custodies. And in or around 2006, a committee comprising of the then Chief Justice, the custodies, the Legal Reform Department, and personnel from the Ministry of Justice crafted a code of conduct and incorporated the existing rules. The code was gazetted, uh, but no legislation was enacted to govern the functions of justices of the peace. Among other things, the new legislation entrenches in law that a justice of the peace cannot and shall not charge for his or her services. It also reflects the increasing functions of JPs, including adjudicating matters such as the ticketing of persons found with up to two ounces of ganja, which no longer attracts a criminal record. A companion bill, the renaming of the Courts of Petty Sessions, Miscellaneous Amendments Act, for the court to be called the Lay Magistrates Court, was also approved by the Senate with no amendments. Residents of Tweedside and surrounding areas of Clarendon are now proud beneficiaries of a health center. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton officially handed over the new two-story facility, which was constructed and equipped at a cost of $40 million. The Eric and Dr. Hyacinth Hugh Health Center is the result of the efforts of the philanthropic Hugh family who hailed from the area. Minister Tufton says the family stands as an important role model for others to follow. We appreciate that because it sets a case hopefully for so many others to follow. This is a fabulous building. Um, it, you know, the average health center is, is nowhere as elaborate as this one. The building consists of offices, a reception area, multipurpose rooms, and five bathrooms. Dr. Tufton says government is creating the environment to garner these kinds of support from people locally and overseas to fill the gap in healthcare delivery. So, for example, we have a wellness foundation 
that caters to persons who have an interest to come back or to give back, and that is under review now to develop. In related news, a check of $1 million has been gifted to the Enfield Health Center in St. Mary to support its management. The money is part of $5 million raised by the Jamaica 55 Charities Group, comprising members of the Jamaican diaspora in the United Kingdom. The donation was done under the Health Ministry's Adopt-A-Clinic initiative, and the Portfolio Minister says the entity has expressed interest in adopting five health centers. Basically what they have said is, listen, you do the assessment, which we have done, look at some of the basic needs of the facility, under the Adopt-A-Clinic program is what we do, and let us use this check, a portion of that $5 million, to enhance the ability or the capacity of the facility to provide better service to you in the community. The Adopt-A-Clinic initiative aims to mobilize Jamaicans at home and in the diaspora to provide support, whether in cash or kind, for 100 community health centers in the first instance. Minister Tufton says stakeholders have been responding positively to the program, with arrangements being finalized for the adoption of 10 clinics. The Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park has received $24 million from the Tourism Enhancement Fund to design and construct a new cafe and visitor center. The almost completed building, which is being constructed at Hollywell Park, will showcase local Jamaican products. The jewelry, the craft, the handbags, all sorts of things that are unique to Jamaica. It's also in preparation for the building that we're construction, constructing with the assistance of the Tourism Enhancement Fund. We're going to be having a gift shop in there and we'll be featuring local Jamaican products. Dr. Tukan was speaking at the National Park's 25th anniversary celebration recently. The Blue and John Crow Mountains was designated a national park on February 26, 1993. The new building, which is set to be completed in November, is part of a larger $46.8 million project for the general improvement of visitor facilities in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And finally, government plans to expand the scope of the annual Jamaica Day celebration in schools to a key event on the country's national calendar. And what we want to see, and it's something that we'll be pushing for next year, is to see more ministries coming on board. More ministries saying to their staff that, yes, Jamaica Day, let us adorn ourselves in Jamaican colors, let us decorate our ministries, let us put up good stories about our country so that we can again resonate in our psyche that we are a great nation. The minister was speaking at the recent Jamaica Day celebrations at the Monroe College in St. Elizabeth. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The Disabilities Act will protect the rights of all persons with disabilities. And here's a great teaching moment. Every person with a disability, like a deaf or hard of hearing child, for example, has the right to an education with accessible facilities and the support they need. In this case, it would be a teacher who can use the language of the deaf, which is sign language. Visit jcpdja.com. A message from the JCPD, an agency of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Do you remember the first reggae song you fell in love with? The music has touched so many people, and some will tell us how. But before we get to that, we turn our focus on education. I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say education is the foundation of any successful society. In our next feature, steps that have been taken by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, so all Jamaican children can strive in our school system. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, which I'm proud to lead, is committed to ensuring system-wide change and transformation that will redound to knowledgeable, skilled, disciplined, and socially conscious Jamaican citizens. For the past 24 months, we have been on a mission working assiduously to ensure that the education foundation of our youth is strong, that structures are put in place to engage and empower our young people, and that our stakeholders and society in general will lead productive lives and enjoy the prosperity that we all deserve. The ministry has placed great emphasis on the early childhood level. The program has been revamped and fully transformed. Over 100 early childhood institutions have been fully certified over the period. This is progress. 
We have increased the maintenance grant for all primary schools by 40% from $30,000 to $50,000 per school. A canteen upgrading project in schools valued at over $100 million was implemented and is at the final stages of completion. The budgetary allocation for school support has been increased from $2.6 billion to $7.8 billion. Significantly, the per capita grant for students at the primary level was increased from $850 per student to $2,500. The ministry has reorganized the payment tranches for schools so they receive funds on time. This, along with the increase in tuition subvention amount, will allow for institutions to better manage operational expenses. We've also implemented the alternative pathways to secondary education, which caters to the multiple intelligences of our children and their diverse needs in order to fully maximize their capabilities. We've also implemented two additional years of schooling in our secondary institutions through the Career Advancement Program, which has continued in full earnest with increased funding to the tune of $800 million. We have also developed and launched upskilling programs, occupational degrees, and full integration of the STEM model within the system. The School Security and Safety Unit continues to implement measures to ensure that teaching and learning take place in a violent free environment. This has received a significant boost from the US aid of $3 million being used to assist with the programs to make our schools safer. We believe no child should be left behind because of the family's economic circumstances. So the government has increased funding for students on the PATH program to ensure they receive lunch for five days per week and literature books commencing with grades 7, 10, and 11. Payment for insurance has also been made for students on the PATH program and wards of the state at a cost of $26 million. The PATH allocation of $2,000 was used to cover the cost of ID and uniform-related items. Book vouchers were also provided for the neediest students up to $2,000 per student with a total spend of $50 million. The budget for PATH is over $4.7 billion. Transportation has also been provided for over 7,000 students of the PATH program in eight parishes. This has been done in collaboration with the Ministry of Transport and Mining. A total of $200 million was allocated for this activity. The merge of the Heart Trust NTA with the National Youth Service, the National Apprenticeship Board, and the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning has been successfully completed. The newly expanded entity will continue to efficiently provide different types of training for young people in the country. The ministry is leading the charge to integrate and consolidate all youth development programs, especially those geared towards reaching the vulnerable and underserved youth. The Child Development Agency, CDA, and the Office of the Children's Registry, OCR, have now merged and is now called the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA. The newly merged Child Protection and Family Services Agency now operates out of the Child Development Agency's regions. This entity ensures that our most vulnerable in society get access to the best possible service. The CPFSA has provided timely intervention to over 3,389 children and their families over the period. We now have a national youth policy to strengthen our capacity to facilitate continuous engagement of our young people. A National Youth Advisory Council has been established to provide support to the government, giving recognition, visibility, and credibility to the contributions of youth. We want to develop partnerships between the government and young people to address their needs and their concerns. Our youth information centers have engaged and interacted with over 47,000 youth over the period with regards to entrepreneurship, personal development, and leadership training, among other interventions. Our information division has been very active and has embarked on several initiatives. We have far advanced in the amendment of the Broadcasting and Radio Rediffusion Act, television and sound broadcasting regulations. By month, the post-cabinet press briefings continue on schedule where the nation is updated fully on cabinet deliberations. Seven broadcast licenses were granted over the period for radio and cable television. The media landscape is growing at a rapid rate and the Ministry of Information is in full support of their efforts. The Ministry continues to roll out the education initiatives under the Education Broadcasting Network, working with the PBCJ. These are but a few of our achievements. Please visit our website and Facebook page for more details. Together, we must continue the collaborative work to help our children and Jamaica as a whole on the road to a better educated and more prosperous nation.
are children and we have rights. We have a right to be protected, provided for, and included. Don't beat me up, don't belittle me, and please don't molest me. I am under 13. I should not be working for a living. That is child labor. It is illegal. Stop leaving me alone. I am too young to provide for myself. I need your guidance. Protect our nation's children. They have rights too. To learn more about children's rights, call or visit the offices of the Child Development Agency. When the music hits, it elevates a society, showcases a culture, and announces the intention of a nation to leave a mark on the world. Right now, what reggae music means to a people. From deep within the archives on reels no longer supported by the platforms of a technological modernization in the transmission of sounds and images, comes the story of a people and their relationship with the music they have bred. If you're rocking a Babylon, reggae! Reggae! Reggae music is bass, brother. Yes, sir. Reggae music is roots. Not a dread. Yes, sir. Is our kind of music that, brother? What me say? If reggae can ever be edged to a set place, then 13 Brentford Road is its home. It was here at Studio One in 1968 that Rocksteady briefly went back 20 years, married the folk rhythms of Mento and gave birth to reggae. The new art form experienced its share of birthing pains as the so-called elites of society struggled to accept its revolutionary presence, while those from whose experiences it sprung cleaved onto this evolution in expression. Reggae music is something that I think most of our people are ashamed of. I don't know why this should be, because it is coming from our roots. So much people are naked like them shame. We agree. Truly. Sure, them just shame what truly belongs to them. What me say? I saw we still some time, do I? Truly. Well, I think that the rhythm is very good and we like it a lot in Jamaica here. As myself coming from New York, I only thought that I would dig soul music, just, you know, funky music. But as I hear the reggae scene, reggae music, I like it. I like reggae music very much because, right, it shows a lot of culture, right? It tells from the plantation days, the type of music that people used to sing, right? And it sort of prevail what really was going on in that time, right? Up till now, right? It's something you can't just sit down and listen to. You have, you know, you get the feeling to move. Reggae music is our high style music. See, we like how soul music belongs to CS reggae music belongs to Jay. And my favorite that is a Bob Marley and the Wailers. Probably because it's, it's part of me. You know, and we create it, I don't know, but I think I enjoy playing reggae very much. I really dig reggae music, but whenever the time I hear reggae music, um, I feel like dancing, you know? I'm in a dancing mood. Generations later and the narrative retains echoes of past sentiments with the addition of new layers. Reggae changer, I can't say like it changer a bit, you know, but still, reggae beat. The old one is better, the new one, not much to me. Mm -hmm. I just love the old stuff. When I'm working, I listen to my music, keep me going, you know? Hey, me go dance and them music that I am play, me not really stay there. It means everything, it's a part of Jamaican's history, so it defines what, who we are as Jamaicans. It means everything, it means love, it means peace, it means understanding. Reggae is a lifestyle. Reggae is a lifestyle, you know, Jamaican lifestyle. Yeah, even the lifestyle you live, because even they tell you, you know, they work hard every day, also hard every day, and music says reggae. So, 
Reggae is life, man. Yeah? Reggae has become what some prophesied, a few decried, and almost none could truly imagine. Reggae is no longer seen in the world as alternative music or third world music or um, new wave music. It's doing good, I think there are a lot of guys who make a lot of money from it, but it is good. I think maybe probably next to tourism. People know Jamaica not only for our sand, sun and beach, but they know us for our music. So when you go abroad and people be like, you're, oh you're from Jamaica, you know Bob Marley, you know such and such, all because of our music. So reggae is our definition of Jamaica. It is the strongest component in the brand Jamaica Construct. Reggae artists and those who specialize in its offshoot dance hall have won major musical awards. In life and past death, its greatest ambassador retains an undeniable international presence that has demanded respect from world-renowned publications. Since 2009, the entire month of February has been dedicated to its celebration at home. It was instrumental in garnering Capital Kingston the designation by UNESCO as a creative city of music. And in 2017, the Jamaican government submitted a nomination dossier to have reggae inscribed on UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage for humanity. This international protection instrument will ensure that the origins of reggae and its de derivatives are appropriately documented and safeguarded for present and future generations. It is fascinating to reminisce on the early days when Jamaican music struggled to germinate and the pioneers were classified in some cases as undesirables right here at home. But even then, in its infancy. Well, I think that reggae is a good music here to stay, and I think reggae music belongs to us, and we ought to show it, right? And now. Reggae is hot commodity, and the world has embraced it, but we are proud to declare that we still own it. Respect must be given whenever respect is due. One more time, let's give it up for Jamaica and reggae music. <laughs> Cancer, stress, high blood pressure. Guard yourself against these potentially deadly conditions by eating healthy. Give your body long life with foods such as low-fat milk, dried and fresh peas and beans, unsalted nuts and seeds, fresh vegetables, fruits and coconut water, and eliminate processed seasonings such as seasoning salt, soy sauces and ketchup. When it comes to meats, remember to remove the skin to reduce the intake of fats and oils. Meats should also be baked, steamed, grilled or roasted. Fish is also a preferred protein option. To eat healthy, fill your body with a variety of foods from all the food groups. And remember, eat at a slow pace and in small bites to help aid digestion. This helps to maintain a healthy, balanced and nutritious diet strengthening your body to ward off illness and prolong life. If I told you that there is something you could drink that improves concentration, helps with weight control, and builds your immunity, would you be interested in it? Well, there is such a liquid. It's water. Water is needed for the body to function from helping to get rid of waste material produced by the body to cooling it down when the time is hot. When you drink more H2O, it just helps the body to function a little better. So take care of your health. Drink water. I know you want to play your part in nation building, and a healthier you is best positioned to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, and you know the rest.
That's all for this edition of Jamaica Magazine, but the beat doesn't stop here. Did you know that you can watch this and other editions of the show online? It's easy and free. Just visit our website or check out our YouTube channel. As usual, your feedback is always welcomed. Send us an email or drop us a line on our social media pages. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Walk good. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.